What's going on everyone? This video is a follow-up to a short that I did recently on doubling vocals, and a lot of you said that you'd like to see a full tutorial on that process, so I'll let that video function as the intro to this one, but if you haven't seen it, the main takeaway is that doubling vocals requires actually singing it twice. But more than that, we're gonna do multiple takes and comp the whole double track together. But the point is, you couldn't take your lead vocal and copy it to a new track and have that function as a double. All that you would achieve there is an increase in volume. Now, there are some tricks like adding a chorus plugin or delaying the copy track a few milliseconds, but to me, those always sound more like an effect and less like an actual double. So let's jump into Pro Tools and I'll walk you through my entire process for doubling vocals. The song you're hearing today is called Only One by Drew Sirks. It's currently unreleased, so you're getting a little sneak peek, and definitely go check out Drew on Spotify. I'll put the link in the description below. So the first step is to make sure the lead vocal is comped and exactly what you want it to sound like. We're gonna be doubling or attempting to copy the lead vocal, and so if we don't first make sure the lead is what we want, then the artist would just be guessing when laying down the double tracks. If we've already comped the lead vocal, then we can play it back as a reference for them to match. The next step would be to record your double takes, and I do this the same way I would a lead vocal. I'll make a new track called Double and have the vocalist do a few more takes that we can comp together against the lead. Okay, so here we have our finished lead vocal. It's been comped, we tuned it in Melodyne, and we have a little auto-tune on it for some style. And then I had Drew sing along to that polished up version to reference while doubling. Now I'm gonna solo the lead and the double tracks and we'll go through word by word and find the takes that most closely match each other. I'm listening for the takes that have a really tight chorusing effect and sound as close to one voice as possible. If I can hear a big difference in pitch or multiple start and end points of a word, then those takes aren't really aligned. We can lock in the timing of the double to sync with the lead better by nudging it around or using something like Vocaline, but the tighter you can get it at this stage, the less you'll have to do later and the more accurate things will sound if you do run it through something like Vocaline later. So let's jump in. I have the instrumental, our lead vocal, and multiple takes of doubles to go through. We'll solo the lead and the doubles and start listening. Listening. Aye, aye. Okay, so that one you can hear is a little pitchy and the two tracks are just clashing with each other a little bit. So let's see what else we got. Aye. That one is much better. It sounds less like two voices and more like a richer single voice with some natural chorusing going on. If you've ever played around with a synthesizer that has multiple voices, sometimes you can adjust the distance and pitch between the voices. Often it's called detune. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're looking for the takes where the distance between the lead and the double is as little as possible. So the chorusing is nice and tight between the two. So I'm gonna skim through a few words at a time and comp together the rest of this double track. I Cool, I like how that starts. The words can't be, they're nice and tight, so we're gonna fly those up. And we'll try some other takes for the rest. Cool, so that's take four, and I like the only, but the word one gets a little pitchy, so we're gonna take up to there. One in, we're gonna steal from take number three. And the word love from take four. With you. Okay, that one's a little pitchy. Let's see what else we got. With you. With you. That one's really close, but the double has a stronger attack, and we're not trying to change the performance. We're trying to match what's already there in the lead. So let's keep looking. With you. That one matches so well that even the vibrato at the end comes through nice and clear. And we wanna be this detailed. Doubling can smear the sound a little bit, and so we took the time to comp together a lead vocal with all the nuances that we wanna showcase, and so we don't wanna lose those when we start adding doubles. We wanna pick the takes that have the same inflection so that we get a nice doubled sound with all of the nuances we picked in the lead. Now I'm just gonna write a couple of fades and clean up the edits, and we'll listen to the lead and double together. This sounds really tight and could work just fine without doing anything else. But to take it a step further, we could tune the double track to get it even tighter. I already did this when prepping for this video, so I'm gonna pull that up and show you how that extra attention to detail really pulls the two tracks even closer. And if you're looking to learn a little bit more about Melodyne, I have a whole video on that over on the channel. Now might be a good time to mention that I do have a bunch of other videos and I'm constantly making new ones. So if that's something you're interested in and you wanna come back when new videos come out, maybe consider subscribing. Okay, so one more time, I'm gonna play you the comped double that hasn't been tuned, and then I'll show you the version we melodyne so that you can hear how that extra step makes it just a little bit tighter and a little more polished. I can be the only one in love with you. I can be the only one in love with you. 
If that sounds really subtle and hard to tell the difference, I agree, and it's because we took the time to pay attention to the details from as far back as the recording process. Instead of just recording a single double, we did multiple takes, and just like a lead vocal that gave us options to pick from so that when it got down to the final stage of tuning, it didn't need a major overhaul, just a little bit to lock it in tune and sit just a little bit closer to the lead. Now we can decide how loud we want to mix our doubles based on how much of the double sound we want. I see people bury doubles down in the mix because when you raise them up, it starts to sound like a gang vocal or a group of people instead of a richer doubled vocal. So if you take your time and really make sure the doubles match the leads, you'll be able to blend them as subtle or not as you want. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks again to Drew Serks for letting me use his song. You can hear more of Drew on Spotify and I will see you in the next video.